we are in the midst of converting our uh, name stands, black italics, into mono italics. Um, and let's see, I got to about the letter F. I still have to do G uh, and everything from there on. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I might as well do G. Um, yeah, just crack on. Uh, let's see. So here is our model for it. And let me bring back my sidebar. Um, all right, I guess I'll just pop that one in the background for now. And pop that here. This uh, tool, by the way, is great. Um, it is called Paste, and it's a Mac app where if you do a shortcut, it'll bring back your like history of your clipboard, which is like so valuable. There's a couple of different apps for it. Uh, Paste costs a few bucks, but it's really well done and works really well. And uh, I really prefer using a computer when I have access to the clipboard history so I can do things like cut and paste a couple of things and like I don't know otherwise I'm always just worried about like oh if I copy this thing I'll just like erase the thing I copied a minute ago or whatever so um, or for coding it's really helpful if you're like kind of inserting something a few places like a media query in CSS or something that you keep getting back to, um, it's really great to have that in your clipboard history. So you can just like search for the thing and throw it in. Uh, or in the case here, I like copied one glyph to the background and then uh, kind of didn't have to go backwards and do it again. Okay, so let's see. I guess I'll start by Uh, making the bowl smaller. That looks pretty funny so far. Love it. Um, and let's also uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, have to get my sea legs again. Mm -hmm. uh, this could probably just be tighter, maybe. And I guess it'll probably have to move outwards. I'm trying to sort of do some transforms here to get roughly the thing I want a little faster than just like dragging blindly around. Um, of course, I'll have to do lots of fixes because I don't know, it's inevitable. Um, but it's always nice when you can get a little bit of a head start. Honestly, I should be uh, doing this more like with the lowercase. Let's see. Oh boy, all right. Um. kind of make this approximately point to the T. And all right. We'll kind of make it take up about the same amount of width for now. I should also just be like having two up so I can better see what I need to do. Oh. By the way, at the start of the video, I was asking if there was a good way to measure. Um, ah, that's annoying. <laughs> I'm like trying to do this scaling click or scaling movement, but if you are holding option and then click in a segment, it makes it a curve segment. Pretty annoying. So I was trying to figure out how to um, check 
this and I learned that, what is the shortcut here? L, okay, good to know. If you uh, hold Control and Option and Command all down at the same time, wait, oh, maybe you have to be in text mode? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so yeah, in text mode, oh, is it not even in the ruler mode? It like temporarily turns on the ruler. That's so cool. I see. So in the okay. Um, well, yeah, some people probably definitely already knew that and were shouting at me about it. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I guess control option command temporarily turns on that ruler and then you can see the answer to the question of like is my v centered in the middle so that's pretty cool i wonder oh my god i didn't know that uh that's pretty cool basically you can get this momentary um ruler even when you're in edit mode with the same key combo, just mashing down your modifiers. And then it works a little more like the usual ruler tool. So that's great. I learned that just literally by accident. It's funny. Um, there's just so many like shortcuts and useful things you can do in glyphs. Why is that not changing into, what the hell? I was dragging the wrong point, and I don't even need that point. Maybe I accidentally inserted it somehow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Glyphs is one of those programs where like they have good documentation, so you can just make a lot of headway just by reading through their docs. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, Robofont also has pretty good docs. Um, and you can definitely learn a lot from just perusing those. I'm just like trying to get this. Um, but I feel like also sort of these programs, like it's kind of the sort of thing you maybe talk about with other people sometimes, and you can really learn a lot if like you're in a group of people who's using these things. So I don't know. Or, uh, you know, maybe that's a reason people would watch uh, somebody designing type on the internet. Um, hopefully, hopefully people learn from these videos. Um, okay. Well. Yeah, it looks relatively okay. I mean, it's still a little bit, you know, blobby and such, but it's somewhere. It's made some progress. I'm gonna boost this up a little bit more maybe. And I gotta put a little flat bit there. So I'm gonna get my E eraser tool, chop that, and then delete that. This could be a lot thinner. I think it kind of has to be like one of these guys, basically. Maybe. Okay. Um, ooh, it sounds a bit stormy outside. That's exciting. Uh, hmm. So this seems pretty off center, but how should I fix that? I mean, I guess that's one way. I think I should also make it thinner here so it kind of reflects that maybe. I'm gonna make a layer so I can easily go back if I want to. I feel like part of the purpose of a black style like this is to look a little bit deliberately silly kind of but it, you still want to follow still want to make it good but like 
Gil Kayo is kind of a famous, very quirky, really dark font style or like really thick font style. And I feel like people love it because it's so strange. Honestly, this isn't that dark because it's it's kind of you know meant for text so you can't go that dark in text otherwise it just clogs everything up um i've definitely got a bit of like gil kayo sort of inspiration for name sans display ultra which does that was about as thick as i felt like i could get while making a reasonably useful style um, and within like a reasonable amount of time. I don't know. I've got ideas for how you could make something even bigger, um, like really, really dark, but then it'd be really purely display. I don't know. Every font idea I hope I have time to make someday. But of course, you have to prioritize. I don't know. It looks a little silly, but also kind of OK in a way. I don't know. As with everything here, my plan is to come back to it. Mostly, I just really need a bold italic. Um, so I'm not. I'm trying not to get too precious to the point where I would um, I don't know where it would take a severely long time to do something decently good. Um, let's copy this. That's probably approximately what I want here. Okay. Well, I guess I could. Rather than closing those and overlapping them, I can just Duck those together and then move that point. And then I've got this kind of spur thing happening. I don't think I have an analog to that yet in the black italic, so let's make it. I haven't done the L yet. Yeah, okay. wonder I'm still kind of you know deciding how much I want to stick to this shape idea um, but at least in like while I'm coding I actually kind of like it a lot like more than I expected to it was a bit of a what would this be like kind of idea and yet It like it doesn't follow logic <laughs> in the way that uh, I tend to in a font. Like no one would really write a cursive I like this, but it's like halfway between what I want. Um, let's see. Do I have? I guess like the way I kind of came to it was. Um, I forget if I explained this in a prior video, but basically there's this style of cursive L for an italic. And that's kind of 
made famous by the font operator mono. I mean, it was done before that in typewriters and stuff. Um, but here it was just too much. Like it, it's totally distracting to me in code. It looks just very dense. Um, but I, and then of course, like the typical thing I've been using in recursive, for instance, is just the simplified form. And I like this form quite a bit. Um, but I suddenly sort of had this in stroke and thought, wait a minute, what if I put this in stroke into the standard italic L and then I looked at it and like, it like gives an appearance of flow in this cool way, um, while still being like clearly mono. I mean, cause the mono shape is like this, the upright mono is like that. So yeah, uh, kind of. Kind of fun all right so 281 that's like almost 300 not that we always need to measure but you know sometimes it's handy what if i just oops i do not want you to come along i mean i should also be looking kind of below And I want this to have a bit of flare, I think, like where it gets wider, slightly wider right here than it is here at the connection. And yeah. So I feel like that's not too bad. Maybe I'll, I kind of have to remove the overlap. Otherwise I'm gonna have a jaggy bit there, which I don't want. Um, especially to allow it to interpolate. I have to make this um, in the light version as well. I wonder, I'm not as familiar with glyphs, but I wonder if I can, no, I guess not. <laughs> I don't know, I think it might be clever enough to say export these instances, if they interpolate uh, and not make me somehow, like my goal is to export a usable font just by making this regular and the black version and not yet making the light version. Um, we'll see if that can happen. I think it is a possible thing. I think those can do that. I could also, you know, I might like, use glyphs, is it glyphs to UFO, glyphs lib to um, just like convert to UFO and then I could do that uh, with a shell script. I've set it up pretty easily. So I guess if glyphs doesn't do it, I'll do it myself. All right, I also wanna make this, why is this not? I should be able to go to it. Okay. Um, and that kind of makes it nice and upright. I feel like I could make it a, well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess there I've kind of boosted it up and made it more square. So I might try that here as well, just because it looks pleasant that way. And I think I probably have to move this slightly to the left. Put the Oganek over there. All right, and yeah, it's, I don't know, is it bunching up too much or anything like that? Maybe I'll cheat it a little bit. I already had that down here. It's probably got to lean forward a little bit. Often you've got to make things lean a little more to make an italic look right. Maybe I'll do it in this way.
kind of start with that, I think. I think it also has to be a little bit towards the right side to sort of look balanced. Okay. And the nice thing is we can also pop this into our L and just stretch it out. So if anybody is watching this far into the video, I'm super curious, like what motivates you to watch these videos? Is there, do you like something about it? Like, is it just background while well, you work on your own stuff? Um, is it to learn about type design? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've always been super curious about that. Cause like, I love watching people skateboard uh, who are good at skateboarding. Um, but like, I've never been somebody to watch much like video game streaming, for instance. Oh, that actually probably does need to be way over here. Um, I guess I, yeah, if I'm really into a video game, sometimes I'll watch people streaming it. So maybe I've answered my own question, but I am still curious what people would have to say. Like, why do you tune in and what keeps you here? And is there are there things that you like or dislike about <laughs> about this? I, I'm still figuring out what I want uh, YouTube to be for me, um, but if other people have opinions, then I would love to learn from them. Okay, so here we're gonna kind of connect this since I already have it made. with uh, i.list. Yeah, it's always a bit of a mystery. Like, how far do I put the J over and then the mono? Um, like, it, you want it to fill up its space, but you also want it to feel kind of centered. I don't know. It's a funny one. And this usually has to cheat quite a bit over to the left to make any sense visually. Um, maybe that's a little too much. Something like that is probably about right. The K looks mostly, oh, but did I, oh, I, oh no, I got clever with the K. Uh, it looks cool, but okay. The whole point of this is to be more expressive. So let's pop you in the background. Let's grab the top of the N. Wait, no, top of the H would make more sense because it connects more how I want it to. Did I say N? H. I meant H. Okay, and then we need this to loop around come down like that and out. So I'll probably just draw that because I can't think of an obvious place where I would have that shape. Let me reference it again. Okay, so one curve, one straight. Okay. I might as well set some extreme points here and then allow this to come out as my curve. I love, so something people don't realize often is that you can like, 
uh, click and drag in the very middle of a segment. And that's like one of the most useful ways to kind of get the curve that you want. Because you can move both handles at once and you're kind of just trying to like pull things into place, like sculpt them. Okay, this should be like that so that we can then, oops. Ooh. I don't know, that's interesting. Apparently holding shift adds points. It's a bit strange to me. Uh, adds off curve points, I should say. Okay, so do I have, no, I don't. So for the light style, I figure I may need to come in like this, but I haven't done it so far. So I will adjust when I need to, but not yet. Because I may not need to. I might be able to kind of cheat it by having the off curve point downward slightly. I don't know. We'll see. Another big question here is like when you're going below the baseline with something, do you put part of it on the baseline or do you kind of like keep the bottom within the overshoot zone? I mean, I think that looks super silly, so I'm not going to do it. I do like it like this. And even in italics, like K is fairly uncommon. So it's kind of okay if it shoots below the baseline quite a bit, at least in my opinion. And it's my font, so... Uh... Of course, I'm just going to follow my opinion. Um, hopefully others agree. All right, this has to be smoother, I think. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a start. Okay, now let's make it compatible. We just have to remove the overlap and I think we'll basically be there. So Command Shift O, Command Shift R. Let's go to you, Command Shift R. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the uh, thickness is a little bit all over the place maybe. But not too bad. I don't know. OK, nice. We have a string that we've already done. Love it. OK, and this is a good one, too. I, actually, I usually would make an, oh, that depends. Honestly, I kind of forget how I even did the italic R in recursive. Uh, maybe it was like this for some, let's, let's even just look, um, recursive, uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is my existing, um, mono, wait, I want mono. Yeah, okay, so I put like a little hook over on the left side and then I kind of hooked down. So this was, you know, trying to be semi-cursive, very brushy. Um, in this, I'm doing this where I don't have a thing on the left side just cause like, I don't know, for some reason this was making me happy, <laughs> basically. Uh, it felt pretty good. Um, and like didn't, I don't know, didn't feel like it needed that for some reason. So let's start by popping you there. And uh, what is it again? Okay. Um, control Command M. And I think I basically, I think I basically used the M. All right, let's try it again. And uh, made this kind of like squared off and then brought it up. And I don't know, for some reason, 
I was liking that quite a bit in in some code. I guess I did plunge a little further here. I think in use, I kind of wanted it to come up to a somewhat sharper corner. So maybe I'll do that. Just so it's a little bit unique and looks a little more R-like rather than like an M that's been made weird. And I did give it more side bearing here, kind of that idea that narrower characters should sometimes be narrower in a mono, even if that means that the side bearings aren't the sort of typical thing you would do. Because like ultimately you want the letter to look centered between its control characters and other characters. So sometimes the way to get that is to make it a little wider. Uh, this I think has to be somewhat wider as well. How much wider? Hard to say. Kind of, you know, doing my scaling transformations to try to keep it somewhat all together. I'm going to rotate this a little bit flatter so it kind of feels like it connects a little better. And I'll have to pay attention to how it interpolates. Reasonable. A little bit lumpy, but... What? Why is that not... I feel like... This needs to come up, that needs to come down. Looks better. Mostly smooth. Okay, the W is gonna be, oh, actually this is italic, so these are quite different. Um, yeah, I've kind of got a, do a good amount for these final characters. So I might pause for a moment, take a breather, and then get to it. These are a little, I don't know, they're what give an italic that much more spice. So they're kind of nice to spend a bit of time on. And yeah, actually, uh, these are the next glyphs that I have to move into the black italic here but i feel like that'll make a good video on its own so i'm gonna stop here for now and as always hope you're having a great day if you're working on fonts or design or whatever else hope it's going great thanks a lot for watching take care